Oh there, this is Bobby <clears throat> from Copal TV Repair. In the video today, uh, I'm sure it's a little bit late, 2012, maybe not, uh, for a is that Punai? Uh, Emerson LC320 EM2, manufactured by Funai. Uh, Funai also makes TVs for Philips. They release them under Magnavox. They also make TVs for Akai, I believe, was I've seen. Anyhow, uh, the problem with this TV was it was totally dead. Uh, there's a lot of information on the uh, internet, you know, on YouTube, and everywhere else. And because I saw some stuff that did not quite match our experience, <clears throat> I want to show real quick here uh, what is going on. First things first, there are probably many different boards that, uh, many different assemblies of that TV. This video is for power supply board BA17F1F0102. Model Z3, I don't know how much that matters. I read a lot of stuff on the internet. I see a lot of repair kits being sold that contain components that are not on that board. Uh, or at least I didn't find them. I saw like 19 parts repair kits. I don't want to talk about that now. Uh, there's just a lot of people out there selling stuff that they don't know what and how are they doing. And on the other hand, the repair kit that we will be selling for that will be matching our experience uh, and some of the ports may not be exact matches for what was uh, what was originally on the board but uh, that's part of the reason I made this video is I want to prove that it does work. So uh, the TV was totally dead and the main fuse was busted. Uh, you can measure it, you can actually visually see that it was open before. This is the replacement fuse. A lot of other stuff was bad. The, the driver transistor for the transformer was shorted. Uh, we replaced it with a different one because we don't have the exact same one. Don't be surprised if you order a repair kit for us. Uh, we use FCPF 20 and 60, I believe. Uh, behind here, a bunch of other things were blown. There was a Zener diode right here. Uh, in the listing you will see what it is. I believe it was 33 or 36 volts and you can find it on the internet. That measure shorts normally even on the board. Uh, so just by measuring it short you don't know if it is bad or not. You have to desolder one leg or both of them. Pull it out, see if the diode was bad. In our case it was. It had to be replaced. Uh, this fusing resistor here was also shorted and we replaced it with a different one. It's a little bit more powerful one. Uh, but it's okay. That pre-driver transistor was bad. It's a PMP, if I remember well, 0.8 amps, 30 or 60 volts. I don't know. We, we use just uh, the best next level replacement. Uh, there was a small diode, which I'm sure we could have dug from schematics, but we didn't, so we just used a, a generic one amp uh, rectifying diode, it worked just fine. And after replacing all those, I don't know if I'm missing some, I see repair kits where those are being included. Uh, they seem pretty powerful to me if those blow. I don't know, I've never seen them blow. I wouldn't pay extra five, six dollars unless you check them and you see that they're bad. So after replacing all those and testing the board, uh, it seemed to be working on a bench put it here in the TV, it uh, blew again. Didn't didn't blow that bad, didn't short, didn't blow this, but blew the, the MOSFET, blew the fuse, blew the transistor again, so I had to replace that. And I started searching further down for a problem. Turned out that the problem was a rectifier yield after the transistor. It's uh, on the bottom of the board, not so easy to show, but uh, with everything disconnected, that is giving that is rectifying one of the output rails of this transformer uh, and gives 5 volts. When loaded, it raises it higher and the way to measure it, and you can actually find it on the back, it's an SMD diode. Uh, this is a zener that, that is on the output of it and uh, it was 2 watt, 
two no uh, two amp rectifier shotkey rectifier diode SMD again we replaced it with something that's a little bit more powerful uh, four amps is what I had and uh, this is the final result <coughs> after uh, I did that and came and turning the TV and actually turned out to be working fine that's exactly what I'm going to show right now let me pull it up uh, we have the standby here let me press the button we got the blinks we have digital television now I've seen other uh, I've seen other cases before where and I spent a good deal of time looking here uh, where a faulty mainboard in Funai Philips can actually cause that overload that I've shown here because there was a rectifier diode in one of the secondary rails uh, the primary was getting overloaded it doesn't have decent protection against that and that's why it was blowing I've seen a case where a short here not on this model or another model causes the exact same thing so I was very careful before I, I made this video uh, to start the TV just with those off uh, it's not very friendly let me shut it off the nice way so what I did is I just started it like that and I want to see if I get proper power and the way you do that right now it is connected to power the way you do that is after you mount it of course it was bench tested before that you get the ground somewhere uh, you are on volts all right and as I said here you have steady 5 volts and what I really wanted to see was will I still have those steady 5 volts if I connect this now there was a risk that well first I did it with an ohmmeter without a load to be frank uh, but then I did this and when you connect the power the, the main board it raises to 16 before dropping down Same with the other one. That jumped to 16, frankly. I don't like, I'm gonna research why is that, because five to 16 is a lot a jump. Uh, something is off here. But uh, the TV works, and uh, we're gonna be selling a repair kit that contains the parts. Uh, well, this is gonna be working for a week before that. Uh, but we will be selling a kit that contains those parts and again if you do receive substitutes for those don't be surprised we sell um, parts that work for us if we don't have exact substitutes and sometimes we do sell of course the exact ones now that is all I hope it helped again there are many different revisions of that board and I'm sure there will be different sources of failure uh, there is no one universal video or guide that will tell you this is how you do everything uh, this is a particular problem that I've encountered somebody else may have had different that may explain why there are different repair kits out there uh, but my personal take is a lot of the repair kits that are being sold are simply people taking advantage of other people without actually having seen particular problems they go with uh, those inner diodes, those rectifiers, basically anything that based on past experience might be failing. Uh, to me that's a wrong approach, mostly because it's very easy to get into selling repair kits that you've never seen whether somebody needs and people are buying them and applying them and of course there's no result because what was failing in one board but you've never seen failing in another and I do know companies um, that are selling repair kits in, that include parts that I have never ever seen with hundreds of boards under my belt repaired. Sanyo main boards, Visio main boards, I just see, see those repair kits that are pure ripping off. But uh, that's subject to another uh, video that I'm going to make for now. Hope this was helpful. Good luck!